Coming up next on City Corner, we learn about the Sweet Potato Project, which is helping young people become entrepreneurs. Please stay tuned. Welcome to City Corner. I'm your host, Melanie Adams. Today, we're talking with the director and students of the Sweet Potato Project, a project designed to help young people learn about the entrepreneur business. Joining me now is Sylvester Brown and student Charnel Hearn. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank it's you for pleasure. inviting us. Thank you. Well, first, I want to know, what is the Sweet Potato Project? Tell us a little bit about the project. Okay. The Sweet Potato Project is an eight-week pilot program. The whole idea was to, was to set up a means to bring economic uh, activity back into urban areas. Uh, so we decided to start with 15 youth, mm -hmm. inner city youth, uh, urban youth, and we had them plant sweet potatoes, plant a, uh, a, a produce. The idea is to turn that produce into a product. So they are challenged to not only to, not only to plant the produce, but to think of a, a, a product based on the produce that they planted, which is sweet potatoes. Um, we teach them the marketing skills, sales skills, how to create a website, how to, how to actually make door-to-door -door and in individual sales, mm -hmm. uh, what are you going to charge for your product, it does it make sense, um, and it's been an interesting, interesting program. Well, Chernell, tell me a little bit, have you ever planted anything before, first of all? No, not really. I mean, like flowers, <laughs> not, not, not food, really. Right, but that's still, you know, flowers at least is getting there. So what did you learn by planting sweet potatoes? What did you learn about the process? That it really takes time. It really takes, you know, uh, hard work to keep it up and, you know, not have it messy, you know, and not growing and, you know, brown everywhere. You know, I had to keep it green and keep it, you know, taking the weeds out, um, planting and, it just takes a, it takes a, a, a good long process though. Man, I'm telling you, you sure, gotta have patience. And I'm sure you and your fellow students were really watching the weather since we didn't have any rain this yeah, summer. Yeah, so that yeah. probably really affected the yeah. crop as well. Yeah. Well, now why did you get involved in the program? Why did you apply for it? Well, to me, well, my mom kept telling me about it. She was <laughs> like, well, you like doing stuff with your hands and you, you smart, so why don't you just go and try to do this program? And I was like, well, okay. And when, I, when I read about it or whatever, and um, on the little thing they give us, <laughs> I was like, well, it do sound like something I, I would want to do. And so I, I showed up, and I was like, well, why not? Like, why not do it? Right. Sometimes, sometimes mothers know best, right. <laughs> so she yeah. actually picked a great program for right. you. Well, I know the program is just piloting this summer, but you're also going to carry it on during the school year. So, what yes. activities will the students be doing during the school year? Okay, the um, the the sweet potatoes won't be ready for harvest until the end of September. Oh, okay. So, we're going to take the products that they've identified. They've identified three products: okay. a sweet potato sauce, a sweet potato pancake mix and a sweet potato kebab. Okay. We're really interested in the whole pancake mix. So while they're going back to school, they'll be taking more classes, more sales classes, more entrepreneur classes mm -hmm. once a week. But we're going to be looking for partnerships, okay. you know, major corporations uh, to really come in and help us really um, develop the recipe, package it, right. market it. We want this to be a real first class product because we, we you know, the whole community is looking at this. Right. Not, only, not only the students, but the people in the neighborhood are saying, what are they doing over there? So, no, so we want, we want a, a real tangible quality professional product to come out of this right. so the community can understand, hey, we could plant food. Hey, we could come up with our own products. Hey, we can create our own jobs in the community. So we're really looking for some strong major uh, partnerships, some people with some influence and resource to really wrap their hands around this pro uh, project. And let's go ahead and make a template, not only for St. Louis, but for disadvantaged areas all over the country. Right. Well, talk a little bit about what was a day like in the program. I, get, I did get to see some images, and I think we have some images from the program, but you had a variety of different guest speakers. Um, I think my friend Maddie Ernest spoke with you along with, um, with the chef at her restaurant. So talk about what were some of the favorite parts of your program for you. Um, for real, just um, 
being with the group together, okay. you know, like all the stuff that the different speakers came and we kind of made a bond with those people because like we kind of feel where they're coming from and it's just amazing dealing with like peers of your own age, you know, and dealing with people that's trying to take us somewhere, you know. And you don't get a lot of people nowadays that's trying to do something, you know, they rather give us drugs than, you know what I'm saying, help us become something positive. So I, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing experience to have, to be here, really. Now, did you know any of the other students in the program or did you make 14 new friends? Um, I knew some of the people. Oh, okay. I went to school with a few of them. Um, one of them is my next door neighbor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of familiar with a lot of them, but a few of them I, I just not meaning. They cool too. Oh, great. Now, how did you get organizations, because you did have a lot of great speakers come in, so how did you get the organizations involved with the, um, with the project? You know, I've done a lot of things, but this is one of the first projects where people got it right away. Okay. Kids, plant, make a product. So right. we, have, we, we were blessed to have the Julia Davis Library right. came in and said, hey, you can hold the classes here. Alderman Antonio French of the 21st Ward gave us the vacant lot to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to grow the, uh, the sweet potatoes. Uh, Lincoln University, Karen Davis with the Lincoln University uh, Urban Extension Program, mm -hmm. Urban Impact Program. She got the slips. She, she, she uh, arranged for us to get organic soil. Oh, okay. uh, so we had a lot of people just stepping up to say, let's make this program right. And, and as Sharnell mentioned, some great speakers. I mean, some really, and they, and they weren't just people coming in to, to give a speech. They really got involved with the kids. You know, they really, some of them came back. Some of them really got on a real you know, heart-to-heart -heart level with them. We had a lot of issues we had to deal with, some personal, some okay. economic, some social. But the speakers came in, the professionals, the, the instructors, and they really got on the same level with the kids and challenged them and, and worked with them. And the kids did the same thing. They, you know, they were, they, you know, what really touched me about this program is that every day, no matter how hot it was, you know, we had right. some oh, hot yeah. days. It was, yeah, it was Those hot. kids were out there in the heat, heat waiting for me. Some were there before I was, right. waiting for the next day. And that just, that really touched me. And do you think, I mean, I know you said you start with a pilot program of 15, but it sounds like you're ready to expand. You're ready to do this program for more students around the region, not only at the Julia Davis branch, but hopefully other spaces in the St. Louis region. Yeah, we're hoping next year to, I mean, we're, again, we have applied for several grants and we missed the first cycle, so we're hoping that next year that we will really uh, uh, receive some nice, some nice grants and, uh, and, and awards to really expand. So I'd like to have our own land, I'd like to have our own building, I'd like to have our own facility, I'd like to have many more kids. Then I'd like to expand the program to ex-offenders and expand the program you know, to uh, other disadvantaged populations. I'm talking about low-income communities. Right. I envision you know, whole communities, <laughs> big farms, right. transportation, packaging, jobs, but you know, one step at a time. Right. Well, and Charnel, I think your group, your, your group's idea was the pancake um, a yes. pancake mix idea. Now, how did you come up with that idea? Were a lot of big pancake eaters in your group? or No, um, actually, we all was to extract it to get in groups and try to brainstorm of what could we really, really um, come up with a sweet potato product out of, you know? And some people came up with deodorant, some people came up with lotion, <laughs> okay. and shampoo, lotion, and maybe. A, whole yeah. lot of, a whole lot of other stuff, you know? But I was like, well, um, let's do pancakes. And everybody was like, well, yeah, that's, yeah, man, let's do that. That's, that sounds cool. So we kind of start pushing towards the pancake thing, so. Your original idea was the ice cream. Ice cream, yeah. Right. Our original idea was ice cream, so. Right, and St. Louis is a big ice cream custard really place, so that yeah. would probably work well. Yeah. And so now, so after you're able to harvest in September, so then you're going to be working on the packaging and how to promote it and where to sell it both online and in actual shops and stores. So those are the next steps. Yeah. Um, it's a like, we really, um, I think, I think the product is unique because right. you see it kind of here and there in restaurants, but you don't really see it in the grocery stores. Right. So I know a lot of people would be like, well, man, I wouldn't really want to pay $25 every time I want to, I want a, uh, a sweet potato <laughs> pancake. pancake. But you know, they'd be great if they sell it in stores for like two dollars, two fifty or something. Right. We'd be good. So I really think it it'll, it'll really it'll go somewhere. Now, were you a big sweet potato fan before this whole thing? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, so this yeah, didn't, this didn't sour you on sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess now you said you talked a little bit about how this experience really 
kind of made you feel and changed you a little bit. Has it changed your future outlook in terms of what you want to do? Because I think, you know, you're 18, so what do you want to do after this based um, on this program? I mean, really, I would like to be in more programs like this, but I'm trying to go to college right now. I'm trying oh. to go to Soul Valley. Oh, okay. And uh, I want to transfer to Virginia Tech to be an architect. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Very good architectural and school. I want to do poetry, too, so I'm a good... <laughs> I'm a good uh, spoken word type of person. So it sounds like, though, you'll be around for the remainder of the year, at least to be able to help help out, even if you're going to Flow Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds good. Well, I guess looking at your recruitment for next year, when does that process start? So if there are, are students out there who are like, I really want to be in this program, when does the process start? We don't think it's going to start until January. Because okay. we, we, we see, uh, again, the kids will be trained through, during the summer. The idea is to have them uh, making presentations and taking orders up until October, mm -hmm. and then by the holidays before Thanksgiving or right around Thanksgiving, we like to have those products back, so. Right, so they'll, okay, so this cohort will be selling their products and then the new group will start in January exactly. working to then create products and exactly. be able to sell them. Exactly. But we're not there with this group. This group is gonna be the emissaries. They're, oh, they're gonna okay. be, I mean, next year is gonna be the real program, so this group we're hoping, and a lot of them said they wanna come back. Okay. We're hoping to have them go through the whole thing again, but, but we're hoping it to be a different structure, more, this was a very fluid, experimental year. We had, we had our rough spots. Right, learned what worked, what yeah, didn't. Yeah. So real, really yeah. a true, I mean, everyone calls their first year a pilot, but really a true pilot. And then these are almost, this cohort is almost the mentors to um, to the new group that'll exactly. be coming in. Exactly. Yeah. Great. And what is yeah. the age group? Does it have, is it just it, high it school? It ranged from 15, if, if you got a worker's permit, because okay. we actually paid the kids. I left that part out. Oh, we paid okay. the kids That's a salary. important. That it's is important, important to know. And, wasn't it important? <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's like, it's really yeah, sometimes important. Sometimes like, you know, Mr. Brown, my check. But anyway, um, yeah, so, so uh, we, we, they're, they're 15 and have a worker's permit. Okay. Uh, to up to 18, 19. Oh. Our oldest is 19 years old. Great. Well, we're going to continue talking about the Sweet Potato Project. We're going to bring out another one of the students in the program, so please stay tuned. Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your humans got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Visit us at stoptextstoprex.org. Welcome. I understand you need a little help with your mortgage. Want to avoid foreclosure. Smart move. Candy? Um, well, you know, you're in luck. We're uh, experts in this sort of thing. Mortgage rigmarole. What not? <laughs> really? Absolutely. And we guarantee results, you know, for a small fee, of course. Uh, such are the benefits of having a professional on your side. <laughs> Why don't we get a contract? Who wants a contract? Uh, Here you go, Pete. Thanks, Betty. Write a toner. Uh, sign it. Come on, sign it. Families around the country every single day we, saving homes. We will talk it over with If you're facing foreclosure, make sure you're talking to the right people. Speak with HUD approved housing counselors free of charge at 888 995 HOPE. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. Once you've got your GED diploma, You'll feel so good about yourself. You come. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? He needs something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. back to City Corner. Today we're talking about the Sweet Potato Project. 
Um, we have Sylvester Brown, who is the director, and also joining us is one of the students, Michael Watson. Thank you for being here again. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Well, we talked a little bit um, with Charnell, but at first, but I want to get your thoughts on the program as well. So tell me first why you decided to participate in the program, and then what have you enjoyed the most? Uh, my father told me about the program. A lot of parents involved. <laughs> <laughs> he told me about the program. He said it, uh, it would be a good idea to do it. Then I looked into it and went to the orientation, and I noticed what it was really about, and I was like, yeah, I really want to do it. Now, had you planted anything before, done anything with gardening, or just uh, your first foray into that? Yeah, first time I never planted anything, but I always want to try to do it. Right, and with this weather, it must have been really hard work all summer. Yeah, we, we had to keep watering and watering and watering and making sure everything was going right, uh, picking all the weeds and making sure everything was how it was supposed to be because it was no rain. Really. Right. <laughs> Well, since it seems like a lot of people found out from their, from their parents, how did you market this program to recruit students? It was a pretty easy sell. I mean, you know, there's a lot of children in our community who need, who need something to do. Um, we got some folks from the 21st Ward. Uh, some people told other kids about it. Some of the kids brought kids with them. Okay. We, we had a different batch when we first started. Oh, okay. In fact, Michael's sister was one in our first, first group, but she... Uh, decided to go elsewhere. But yeah, uh, some of the kids brought some of their friends. They came to the first class and they brought other kids. Uh, but it really was not hard at all to get kids. Well, I think that just goes to show you kind of the need out there for students and kids to be involved in something over the summer. Yeah. Because even if they do participate in summer school, that's only three weeks. You still right. have a whole summer's worth of activities. Right. And again, we were paying them. So once right. the word got out, hey, there's a summer job, you might, you know, get now, How many hours per week was it? They work, we, we, we have classes uh, four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, for four hours, from okay. 9 a.m. to 12. Oh, okay, so that's yeah. not too bad then. Well, that's wonderful. Well, Michael, tell me a little bit, what has been your favorite part about the program? We talked a little bit about all the different speakers and things that came in. Did one really resonate with you? Uh, I liked it, Karan Bowden. Okay. He uh, owns a studio, and we went to the studio today and made a sweet potato song. And it was really funny. What was it like working in the studio? It was different because I've never been to a studio. So everything, all the technical stuff and everything. And I, I liked it. Right. So did you so you guys created like a jingle or some type of song to sell your product? Uh, it was, I don't think it was a, more of a jingle. I think it was like more of a sweet potato song about <laughs> and about the project and everything, like what we go through and what we've been through and oh. like all together. You did a really good job. Oh, so is that kind of, this is the culminating week of the program, so you're kind of, well, culminating week for the summer, because it will continue, obviously, during the school year. Mm -hmm. Well, a program like this, obviously, um, can't run on hope alone. <laughs> so no, what types of no, things have you been no. doing to really make sure it's supported by the community? Uh, this has been a, a uh, first of all, it's been a grassroots effort from the very beginning. We, we did raise, uh, and Carnet Word Foundation gave us $5,000. Okay, so a seed money that type. seed money. Uh, but we just did a lot of uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. LinkedIn. <laughs> begging our friends. I have to say that this, this program uh, is run by the North Area Community Development Corporation, a, a, a 501c3 organization. So we were able to get some private donations, but we had to, you know, it was really writing about the kids. Once I started writing about it, telling their stories, putting a face on the stereotype, if you will, right. people really started to respond. I liked those kids. So right. then we started getting the $25 checks and the $50 checks. So, but it's still a struggle. We're, we, we've been raising money and will be raising money up until the last minute. In fact, right. our last day of the summer program is tomorrow. The kids, the kids, again, about these beautiful kids, when, it, when I told them that we needed funds, they came up with ideas to raise money. money. So, we're, so we're, tomorrow they're going to go out in the street. We got products for them to sell, donate, right. donated candy, chips. They're going right. to get out there and sell it tomorrow on their last day. Then we have a car wash we're right. going to do on the weekend. Right, so the car wash scheduled. You know, we're going we're to work this program together. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been inspiring for me. Now, Michael, how do you see continuing this on into the school year? Because I think the harvest is at the end of September, and then it's all about the product. So how, what, what are you looking forward to in that sense? Well, sometimes I don't have stuff to do on the weekends and after school. So it'll be a great opportunity to keep working on it and keep doing it. Right. So, yeah. And I think and product development is kind of hard. I know you're looking at the... Um, the pancake mix, but it's designing the box. It's all the things you don't think of. You just think pancakes mix appears. Right. It doesn't just appear. <laughs> it's the recipe. It's the chemicals. Um, Michael's Michael's kind of. Uh, I'm gonna have Michael talking to some church people <laughs> and Charnel. You know, I mean, I've got some some kids who are very very uh, engaging. So. Right. 
they'll be out there selling this product that they've created. Right, and I think, and as you said, I mean, the descriptions that you wrote of the students in the program were just wonderful, because it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to be doing other work, and I remember I read through all of the descriptions, because yeah. um, it does, it really does put a face on the program, and it really helps to show what you're working towards, because yes. I think there are so many negative stereotypes out there in terms of students and what they're doing, and this really shows that if you give them something positive to do, students will do that. Okay, everybody's saying they heard about the Sweet Potato Project. We need people to buy the product once right. it's created. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need some corporate support. We need folks to wrap their heads, hands around this idea, wrap their arms around this whole program, and let's make this real. Right. You know, and I know you did have a little national attention because you had Chef Jeff, Chef um, Jeff. come in and do a fundraiser for you. So if you want to talk a little bit about who he is and why that was such a great connection yeah, for Chef you. Chef Jeff is a uh, New York Times bestselling author yeah. of the book Cooked. Um, he is a chef. He went to prison for drug, right. de for drug dealing, came out, became the first African-American chef at the Bellagio Hotel, right. mm -hmm. uh, did a best-selling book. Will Smith has now commissioned his work to oh, make a movie out of it. Uh, Jeff was in town. We were working on a project together, a writing project. I told him about the Super Potato Project, and Jeff right away said, well, let me know. I'll come in and do a fundraiser for you. So it was a really short notice. We didn't really have time to really promote him. We had no advertising budget. Right. But, you know, Jeff came in, spoke to the kids one-on-one. -on -one. He spent a good oh. 45 minutes just talking to the kids about what this program means. And he's a beautiful brother. And right. I really appreciated his... Uh, right. So is he really motivational? And you kind of remember some of the things that he talked about? Yeah, he was, uh, he was telling us, like, his story and stuff. And, like, it's, it's, we can make it out. Like, we can make a difference and we can do what we want to do if we put our mind to it. Right, and I think he's, I mean, it, it is, it's just such a great example because I think a lot of times you may have people that may not necessarily be able to relate to the students and their experiences, but it sounds like um, from both students, you had a lot of speakers who really did connect with the students. We really did, and we really did. Um, and I can give you a bunch of names, but you know, I, I leave somebody out and <laughs> right, insult somebody. Right, exactly, there's always but, somebody yeah, there, there were people who really, really connected with these students and really uh, wrapped their arms around them. And they call me now, you know, how are they doing? What are they up to, you know? Right. Now, so, as again, we've mentioned, this was a pilot year. Next year, these students will come back. But I guess in five years, what is your dream for this program? What do you hope to see the program turn into in that time? I would like to see my kids become entrepreneurs. The beautiful thing about this program is it's about doing it in your community. It's not about running, running out, out of St. Louis urban areas. It's about bringing jobs, bringing energy, bringing your fresh ideas back to the community. So I, so I, I see large-scale farming. I see large-scale growth of all kinds of uh, produce, not just sweet potatoes, tomatoes. I see turning that into products, tomato sauce. I see pies and cookies and ice cream and stuff. I see large-scale uh, manufacturing, producing, packaging. I see transportation, driving it, you know. We have trucks to drive this food around the local restaurants, to local grocery stores. We have an online service where you can now, it's like, we, what we have is, a, a, a Girl Scout cookies with an urban twist. Right. You know? <laughs> so, you know, I see, I see jobs. I see a rebirth in the community. I see, I see spin-off businesses. I see um, food that's, that's being produced in neighborhoods where there's no access to food. Right. You know, there's no access. There's what they call food desert. deserts. Right. So, not, so we have a win-win situation here. Not only are we, are we finding a way to create jobs, we're addressing a dire need and we're creating jobs in our community. So yes, I see ex-offenders coming right out of prison and going right to work for the Sweet Potato Project, the Sweet Potato Manufacturing Plant. <laughs> <laughs> I see bakeries coming out of this. I see coffee shops coming out of this. I see all sorts of spin-off businesses coming out of this. So, the, and these kids are the pioneers. Right. So I see them on stage after Sylvester's gone, <laughs> you know, talking about, well, you know, this is what we did and this is how we started. So Michael, how do you, what are you going to tell your classmates when you go back to school, kind of what you did this summer? Well, I'm going to uh, go back and kind of brag. <laughs> <laughs> Bring I'm a sweet uh, potato, show them. <laughs> yeah, I did agricultural work and uh, planted sweet potatoes, grow them, and we're going to make a product out of them and got paid for doing it, even though I, it wasn't really a big deal. And uh, we're making a change in the community and I'm going to what did you do this summer? <laughs> right, right. Well, that's, a, that's a great question. That is a wonderful question to ask them. And I think that entrepreneurship part is really important because even if the students decide they don't want to grow sweet potatoes, right. it's the skills they learn during the process that right. I think is really important. It's planting that seed that I don't have to depend on anybody. Right. All I need is my imagination. All I need is just an opportunity. All I need is my own unique idea. And I can be independent. 
And I can, I can also not only take care of my family, but I could hire other people. And I can bring activity back to the community. Right. So I think it's a, it's a power, and not to pat myself on the back, because <laughs> a whole lot of folks involved with this. But I just think it's a powerful, powerful uh, idea and a powerful moment for St. Louis right. to really you know, create a template. Right. And I think, and obviously, the message has gotten across to students because they understand the idea of community. And they understand the idea of giving it back to the community. Now, did you have someone who, who came in and talked about food deserts and what those were? And uh, yeah, they uh, told us and uh, was like, we need to plant stuff in our community because some people can go out to Snooks and other places, markets to get their food. So it should be uh, a place in our community that they can come and get fruit and vegetables for low prices so right. it won't be breaking their budget or anything because we really need it in our community. Right, and I think fruit deserts has become almost vogue that term in mm -hmm. the last couple of years mm -hmm. in terms of people really talking about them. So mm -hmm. I think you know that's really important that then you have students who understand what a food desert is, and so when they're out in the community, they can look for ways to make sure there are opportunities to have access to fresh food. We we also connected them to their history. We mm -hmm. told them that it wasn't always like this in low income okay. neighborhoods. That there were times when we had African Americans had to depend on themselves. Mm -hmm. They had their own funeral homes, their own grocery store. They grew their own food. So we we we, we connected that piece too. To let them know that this is not something that's never been done before. It's right. just something you guys need to bring back. Right. Well, in closing, I want to give you one more opportunity. If people are interested in learning more about the Sweet Potato Project, you have a website, a phone number, kind of information they can call? Yeah, they, they, they can go online to whenwedreamtogether.com. Okay, whenwedreamtogether.com. Whenwedreamtogether.com. Okay. That'll take you to all the links. The kids will have their own Sweet Potato Project website up. Oh, it should okay. be up by next week. So you should okay. be able to type in Sweet Potato Project stl.org. Now, on that website, will we be able to buy this sweet potato pancake mix? When it's ready. <laughs> right. and you'll be able to watch the process. Oh, okay, <laughs> so, wonderful. Yeah. And you have the kids' stories, you have the kids' photographs, you have the sweet potato song that they created today. You have, uh, you know, everything about the project, and you'll be able to monitor and watch the kids and watch the product that they've created. Well, I am so excited. It sounds like it's going to be wonderful. I look forward to um, learning more about the project as it progresses, and I look forward to buying the pancake mix. Well, we look forward to you. So I'd like about. to thank both of you for being our guests today on City Corner, and see you next time. Thank you.